Hey guys, welcome to part 7B of the survival series. Now, I apologise for this taking so long as I always seem to do, but I've had a series of sort of issues, just arisen, been very busy, and then my new microphone broke, so I've been having a lot of good luck. So, I, again, I apologise for it taking so long to sort of get me to get round to actually doing this, so I'm obviously using my broken sort of headset that I've got. So, I apologise if the quality is a bit um, off more so than normal. So right, what we were doing last time was we were looking at creating the crafting system really. So the initial part of the crafting system so we could actually just start the game, press C and we could obviously um, hopefully bring up an object when we clicked one of these boxes. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking into just modifying this crafting script a little bit. And then work it on to actually we're going to start building our objects once once we click a button. And obviously I got an error down here because it, I clicked the button and it wanted me to do something that's referenced in the script. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our crafting script that we did um, last time in 7A. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually go about making new columns. Or adding new columns so you can add new objects. So I'll go through this as quickly as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave everything like this and we're going to go down to where we've got our last if statement which talks about the GUI button. So from there we're talking about the tent icon and the spare icon. So what we're going to show is that we're going to add just what we're going to do is we'll add two line breaks underneath the last curly bracket there just slightly above the GUI label that we've got. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put two um, slashes and I have a comment called second column so you can all understand where I'm going with this. So the second column is going to be essentially based on the same line that we've got here so we'll paste that in like we've got add before. Paste it in so it says if GUI button such and such and such and all the same as what we've done. But the thing is, we're going to just need to change the values, the X and Y values. So we can see at the beginning, so the first GUI button was 10 across, 50 down. But this time, what we actually want to do is, for this instance, we want to just set it to um, 100 across. So we're going to shunt it across. And then we're going to say 50 down like before. So we're sort of doing, um, just adding a little bit to the X value so it just shunts it across to the side. We'll leave it as 50-50 and we'll name this spare icon 2 because we don't have anything to add there yet. And I can leave the script in uh, infantry script dot wood and infantry script dot stone the same. So we'll leave it like that and I'll name this spare item or spare 2. Then what we obviously need to do is have a variable up here called spare icon 2 as type texture and then variable spare to as type game object and obviously I'm leaving these open to you or if I um, edit this in the future so essentially we're just gonna do you know you can do this as many times as you want I'll do it one more time so I'll show you what I'm doing again so again what I'm gonna do is copy that if statement and then I'll paste it in delete that away so this time we leave it 100 and we'll set this one to 120 down because we're following what we had up here and then we'll leave it as 50 50 we can leave that all the same and we can have this as spare 3 and spare icon 3 then what we'll do is we'll create the two variables up at the top spare 3 as game object and variable spare icon 3 as texture and we'll save that out so when I go back into unity now and we press play and we press C you'll notice that we got two objects just like before ready so we can apply if we click on our first person controller we can apply the icons that we might have made to those depending if you want to make an axe, pickaxe, um, a tent, um, the campfire you know anything you want it's just up to you and it's open to whatever however you want to make it so 
from there, yeah, obviously we've got the crafting so we can bring up a little menu and click a button. Now we obviously want to be able to make it so that we can have some sort of visual elements for our player so we can see what we're going to create when we click a button. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I've made two prefabs here. So one called Campfire Player and one called Campfire play Prefab and campfire player is the one that's going to just go in front of the player so it's going to act as almost a dummy object and we don't really need to do anything crazy with that except make sure it's got you know whatever it's got your collider on and it's just got a rigid body on but it, it's kinematic so kinematic just means it won't use gravity and it won't move so what we're going to do is we're going to select our game object you can obviously create a square a cube but this is just an example of what we're going to do, so I'll, I'll just drag this cube in front of my player. Roughly, roughly here, say, there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate that object because I don't want to be able to see it yet and I don't want to be able to do anything yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent that to the main camera over here. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go back into this script here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to add it to the campfire slot that we've got. So campfire player can go into there. So what this is going to do is then when we play our game and we press C and I click campfire, it's going to make the object appear as if you know you might be able to create that. And it starts off as red, so it looks like as if you won't be able to build it unless you pl um, place it in a particular spot. Now we're going to have another prefab which is exactly the same, I've just got a different colour on it. And this time it needs to have a rigid body on it which uses gravity and you can add a rigid body by going component, physics, rigid body. And all I've done is created two cubes and made them into a prefab. So from there in the crafting we're going to create a new script and this is going to let us actually instantiate the object that we want to create. So now we'll go to JavaScript. Um, I'll name this campfire build. And what we'll do is we'll open campfire build in mono develop. And what I'll do is I'll delete the first starting functions. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by writing a variable called camp campfire campfire prefab as type transform and variable player as type game object. So like we've got in the prefabs that we created that I told you to create, then we've got a private variable called can build. Set that as boolean equal to true. So from here what we're going to do is write a function start. So what we're going to do when we initially start the game. Then we'll say renderer dot material dot color equals oops dot color equals color with a capital dot green with a semicolon then renderer dot material dot color dot a for alpha equals 0 0.5 with a semicolon. So what this means as soon as the game starts it's going to change the colour on that little box that we've got to green and we're going to set the opacity to 0 0.5 so it's going to be slightly transparent. Then what we're going to do is write another function called function on trigger enter then two brackets then two curly brackets below but inside those brackets what we're going to say we're going to say call colon collider but I'll make sure that's a lowercase c. Then I'll say that if call dot game object dot tag is equal to terrain in your quotes, then we can do two lines which is between shift and z, which means or if you hold shift, which is almost hold shift and you see the black slash between z and shift you'll be able to create the two lines which say that if it's this or it's this so if it's call.gameObject.tag is equal to terrain or call.gameObject but it keeps changing it for me but I'll change that in a second dot tag is equal to in quotes tree 
So obviously what we're doing here, we're saying that if um, our object collides with the terrain or a tree or whatever else you might have, so you can set whatever tags you want, but I'm just doing this as an example, we'll add two curly brackets below and say renderer, like before, dot material, dot color, equals capital color, dot red, semicolon, then renderer, dot material dot color dot a is equal to 0 0.5 with a semicolon then we'll say can build is equal to false and also what we'll do is we will copy this entire um, function paste it in and we're going to say on trigger exit this time so on trigger exit call colon collider if it slows again and what we'll do this time is we'll set this one to green and say can build is equal to true. So what we're going to do, if it collides with any of the things, we'll set it to red and say we can't actually build the object. If it doesn't collide with anything, it'll change the color to green. So obviously it seems, oh yeah, we'll be able to build, it looks good. It'll set the can build equal to true. So one last thing, we want to do the update function so we can show when we're doing that. So we'll say function update two brackets, two curly brackets below. And then what we'll say is if input dot get key down, open brackets B in quotes, close that up, and and can build is equal to true, close that brackets, add two curly brackets below there, and we'll say instantiate open brackets campfire prefab comma player dot transform dot position plus vector three open bracket zero comma zero comma five close that up comma quaternion dot identity close that up add a semicolon then we'll say player dot get component open brackets crafting so we're referencing the crafting script dot camp fire dot set active in brackets false close up and a semicolon so i'll show you what we're doing is that if we press b here and we can build so as long as it's green and we can build we're going to instantiate create the campfire prefab that we're setting at the player's position plus x y and z z coordinates five in front in front of the player quaternion and identity is just needed to instantiate an object and then player dot get component crafting dot campfire set active false means that we're going to look for the player object crafting so we're going to go to the crafting script and it's going to say campfire so campfire is this object here and we're going to say set active is false so it makes um the the object that was in front of our camera false now so we can't see it again so make sure you save all those out go back into unity is we can add the campfire build to our campfire um, player prefab so if I add it there to the prefab you'll notice that on the prefab in my scene it's changed it for me so on the player in the scene we can add the player there and then we can add the campfire prefab here one thing I did forget to mention is on the campfire player we need to make sure that our box collider is is trigger so we'll tick that on the prefab itself and it'll change on the object now if we go into the crafting click on to build a campfire you'll notice that when we go towards a tree you'll notice it'll go red if we press B we won't be able to build it now obviously if this terrain was higher and this box was a little bit in front of me what we'd be able to do is we'd see that it would go red what I'll do is I'll show you the example so if I quickly enable that and just pull it you know there in front of the player make it invisible again we'll build it again you'll notice that it clips with the terrain there and as long as it's blue what we'll do is we press B we'll build our campfire even though it is a box and you'll notice that it's taken the objects again away you'll check your infantry 
then you can see that wood, stone and clay has gone down. We can press this again, bring it back again as long as it's green. We can press and build and it will build in front of the player and obviously the wood and amounts have gone down again. So essentially all we've done is we've added a few bits to the crafting, so we've added a few more icons. And then we've added the campfire build to change the colour, set some booleans to true and false, and then as long as we press a button and we can build, we'll just instantiate the, play, um, the object or the campfire or whatever we want in front of the player. And all we're using is campfire player that I created, which goes and attaches to the main camera, and then from there on the campfire player you add the script and you add the campfire prefab because that'll just build it from script so i hope that helps everybody out so that's part 7b of the survival series and that's showing you how you can start instantiating lots of different objects as long as you've got the resources to build them so thanks again for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers